coming to fifth one hydrothodes fifth one is hydrothodes hydrothodes in some plants water is exudes water exudes or released in the form of droplets in the form of droplets from margins or leaf apex right this process is called gutation this process is called gutation this is due to the activity of special tissue or special gland called hydrothode due to the presence of hydrothodes in the leaf margins or leaf apex water is released in the form of droplets such process is called gutation this is due to hydrothodes right each hydrothode contain vein endings hydrothode consist of vein endings and epithelium epithelium and next one a cavity and a pore these all pores are present in hydrothode for example this is the internal structure of a leaf or grass right this is epidermis this is epidermis over the epidermis there is a cuticle inner to the uh, epidermis there is mesophyll tissue this all is mesophyll okay next in the leaf in the center of the leaf vein endings are present these all are vein endings vein endings tracheids are present in the vein endings right okay these vein endings are associated with loosely arranged parenchyma cells they are associated with loosely arranged parenchyma cells this loosely arranged parenchyma cell is called epithelium epithelium these are vein endings vein endings right next epithelium is associated with a cavity here a cavity is present and this cavity is opens out through a pore here a pore is present this is a pore this is a pore this cavity is associated with a pore through which water exudes in the form of water droplets once again i am repeating i am writing here this is cavity and this is pore right mm. water is transported to vein endings from here water is entered into the cavity through epithelium this is lo loosely arranged parenchyma right from cavity water is forced out uh, into the external atmosphere through pore this pore is also called water stomata sometimes hydrothodes are also called water stomata okay in the pore or water stomata guard cells are present without opening and closing mechanism without opening and closing mechanism this is about hydrothodes coming to sixth type of special tissue that is latissiferous tissue latissiferous tissue this tissue is concerned with secretion of thick fluid it is concerned with secretion of thick fluid secretion of thick fluid this thick fluid is called latex this thick fluid is called latex right this latex is emulsion of carbohydrates that means which contain carbohydrates proteins fats organic acids organic acids rubber etc 
This latex is generally yellowish, yellowish or milky or colorless, colorless. That may be yellow in color or milky in color. Otherwise, it is colorless. Latex is stored in vacuoles. Latex, latex is stored in vacuoles. When the toroplast is ruptured, the, uh, this latex is released into cytoplasm. Cytoplasm. It is stored in vacuoles. When the toroplast of the vacuole is ruptured, then it is released into cytoplasm. Among these all components, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, organic acids, enzymes, in which resins and rubber are the chief components of latex. They are the main components of latex. What are they? Resins and rubber. Resins and rubber are chief components of latex. Nearly 40 to 50 percentage of rubber is present in Hevia brasiliensis. Hevia brasiliensis, which consists latex. In this latex, 40 to 50 percentage of rubber is present. From which para rubber is prepared. Para rubber is prepared from the latex of Hevia brasiliensis. And Indian rubber is manufactured. Indian rubber. Indian rubber is manufactured from ficus elastica. Ficus elastica. Right? Next, these latticeferous tissues are distributed um, in tropical forest or tropical plants. They are distributed in tropical plants. They are present throughout the plant body and they are mainly associated with phloem. Latticeferous tissues are mainly associated with phloem. Again, latticeferous tissues are classified into two types. They are number one, latex cells, latex cells and number two, latex vessels, latex vessels, right? Coming to first one, latex cells. Latex cells are isolated cells. They are isolated cells. They occur as individual cells. They may be branched or unbranched. Latex cells are branched. Otherwise, they are unbranched. Branched or unbranched. They are also called simple latticefers. Latex cells are also called simple latticefers. Simple latticefers or otherwise they are also called non-articulated non-articulated latticefers. Non-articulated latticefers. They are mainly associated with uh, phloem. They are occur in different parts of plant body but mainly associated with Phloem. For example, these are the phloem cells. Phloem cells. In the phloem cells, they are present as individual cells. They, they are isolated cells. Otherwise, they may be present as single cells. Right? Branches may be present or absent. They are called simple latticefers or non articulated. Latispheres. They are found in Asclepiaceae. Asclepiaceae members. Asclepiaceae and Apocynaceae members. Apocynaceae members. Right. Coming to second one. Latex vessels. Latex vessels are formed by the fusion of latex cells. These latex cells are fused together to form latex vessels they are formed by fusion of latex cells they are highly branched latex vessels are highly branched and they are canal like structures 
there are canal like structures in the canal like structure latex flows from one place to another place they are called articulated lattice pairs or compound lattice pairs they are called articulated lattice pairs or compound lattice pairs are latex ducts they are also known as latex ducts okay they are mainly found in asteraceae apocynaceae and moraceae uh, papaveraceae etc right this is about special tissues in the next class i will come with another topic thank you